Hello, welcome to Board Games with Niramas. Today is a day I've been looking forward to. It's time for a run through of the game Anachrony. This game that really blown my mind. I uh, really love it uh, right off the bat, and now I've been playing it for a bunch of times, so I'm really getting into it. And uh, well, stuff has been delayed, but uh, now we're going we're going to finally get a run through of this with two players, me and Draco. Draco's ear look weird, by the way. Um, come on, buddy. Yeah, the box is too big for it. <laughs> It's okay. So, we're going to get started and Drek over here, he's going to be playing the Path of Salvation. How lovely. Uh, and so he has his leader here, which is High Sunwalker Amina. And her special ability is that... Well, let's get into that later uh, as I explain the game. Uh, by the way, I should mention I'm not using the, the, the retail copies uh, Sort of workers uh, or exosuits that the worker can travel in. I'm using uh, these minis that I've been just uh, base coated so far to black. They are grey from when you get them, uh, like that. But uh, I'm going to paint these, but it's going to take a while. It's sort of a big job ahead there. So, so uh, and there's my workers, uh, well not workers, my exosuits that my workers can travel in. Uh, gargoyles, yeah, really cool, really big, uh, heavy miniatures. I love these. Uh, normally you would be using, if you buy the retail game, you get these uh, that you can put the worker in. I mean, these works, the game works exactly the same way, it's just that it's much cooler having these minutes, basically. Okay, so let's uh, get going. There's a lot of things to explain, so let's just get started. Uh, I'm not going to explain everything, uh, of course. I'm going to explain it as we go. So let's just spend a few minutes talking about the game, how it works. This is a worker placement game, but it has a twist, which is time travel. So, we are in the year of 2600 something, uh, there's been like a big war or so on, um, like a nuclear war and the earth is pretty much uh, destroyed, there's just a few people still living, most of them live in the capital where the world government has control. Um, but some live in our cities here, and this is my, my city sort of, my pet of progress, these player boards are massive of course, a really good quality. Uh, so I have my leader here, uh, Patron Valerian. And we believe in progress and technology and so on. Draco is more of a religious type with this whole salvation stuff. Uh, so we have, and we are playing, this is so great, we are playing on the B side of these boards. If you switch them around, there's an A side where everything is the same. But on the B side, it's as asymmetrical. So we have different sort of stuff going on. Uh, also these uh, boards here with the leader on, the leader boards, they are also A and B sided, so you have different goals depending on which side you, you're playing on. So I'll be playing the B side on this one and the A on this one, so you can mix that up as you want. I think uh, everybody should play the same though, so yeah. Um, and also, oh, there's so much to explain. Uh, I did the setup, but I, I left a bit out so you can see it. Out here on the main board, Let's just quickly go over this main board. It's it's there's a lot of things going on. There's this worker placement spot where we will place our uh, cool extra suits and we will actually put our workers in them like this. This is so cool. Uh, so you're you're putting it in. You have to power up the extra suit, then you put it put it put the worker in it, and then you can move out and do an action. Uh, if there's a big space like these two, then uh, and any number of um, workers can be there in their extra suits. But these spots are just for one guy, so it's classical worker placement, you have to get there first. And the first one to go here is free, the second one costs a water. Uh, water is sort of like the money in the game, sort of like uh, currency in the future. Uh, clean water, of course, is hard to get because of the toxic wasteland we live in. And that's why you need these extra suits as well to be able to travel without dying in it. Um, okay, so where do we start? Well, let's start from the beginning. Up here we have a water uh, plant where you can get three water, but if you send a scientist, because you have different kind of workers, if you send a scientist you will get an extra water. Uh, but the engineer and the administrator can go there as well. Then we have the trading with the nomad spot here, you can trade different things. If you send a scientist can go here, an engineer can go there, but if you send the administrator then he can do two trades at once. So that's better, of course. Sort of maximizing uh, turns and everything. And so, um, over here we have the labs that you go to in the city where you can try to get some scientific breakthroughs with using these dice. You're going to be able to, uh, there's three different shapes of sort of scientific breakthroughs. Um, and you're going to 
be able to lock one of these dice in because there's a bunch uh, of these five different symbols for each uh, breakthrough. So uh, I'll, you'll see how that works once I do that and over there are the ties and so on. Uh, we also have some end game goals, we don't need to get into them too much now but as we keep playing I'll tell you about them. Then we have the recruitment spaces where we basically go and find unemployed uh, workers that we can hire to increase our workforce. So there's uh, four different workers, so there's the scientist, the engineer, the administrator and the genius. And the genius is sort of like a wild card, he can act as any one of these guys. Uh, so he's really strong, but right now there's no genius out because every every round you pull out a card from this deck. This is a lovely mechanic, uh, I like this very much, where it says, well, what kind of workers are out there today or this year or whatever. Um, then we go further on, we have the building spaces where you can build buildings or super projects. Super projects are the stuff down here uh, that we have uh, one each round because this game is played over four rounds and then the impact happens. I'm going to explain that later on. And then we have three more rounds, perhaps. It depends on how we play, how the game ends. So we can build stuff here. If we send a scientist, he can build. And if uh, we send an engineer, he can build with the discount of one titanium. It's one of the resources in the game, but the administrator can't build at all. And by the way, it's the same over here. Like in the recruitment, if we send, we can send a scientist, we can send a engineer, but he can't recruit geniuses. It's only the administrator that can do that. And in the labs, only the scientists can go, which makes kind of sense thematically. Then we have over here, outside the city, sort of, is the mine. When you go here, oh, I forgot to fill this. When you go here, you can place it in any spot you want. Uh, you're going to get the stuff that is to the right of it, and then you get to choose one of these. And these vary from round to round, because as you can see, we draw a card every round to see what kind of resources uh, the mine has. And there's four types of resources. There's titanium, there's uranium, there's gold, and there's neutronium. And neutronium is sort of like a future um, substance, and it comes from this meteor. So when we end the fourth round, the meteor will strike. And uh, the nice thing is, once it happens, now we have to get into the whole uh, sort of paradox uh, type of thinking. Once it happens, it brings neutronium to the world, sort of, or to us. That means the people in the future can use it to build the time machine. And so they go back and tell us, well, there's going to be a meteor striking, and they can even bring stuff to us. So they can bring us neutronium, which means we can build a time machine before this happens, but you can only travel back in time for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, it's usually like that in time travel, <laughs> them thematic books or movies or whatever. So that means we can get stuff from the future, but then also, let's say we get a, if we're in round three, and I'll, well, uh, and I'll have a, uh, a gold piece sent back to me from my future self, then sometime during the game, I have to send that gold piece back because otherwise, you know, a paradox appears. Like, how did I get the gold if I didn't send it back? So, uh, we, and if you get too many paradoxes like that going, then you will get anomalies, and anomalies are not good because they will sort of block up your board and give you minus points and so on. So that's sort of the layout. We also have the world government spots up here where you can copy basically imitate one of these actions, but it costs water. And this is the first player marker, this is lovely. Each player has his own first player marker. I've never seen that in a game before, it's so cool. You have this uh, banner, and so since I have it here, I'm the first player. But Draco can go here, pay two water, imitate one of these actions, and take it from me and be the first player. We'll see if he, do, if he will do that during the game. So, back to the player watch, I will explain them a little bit just. Uh, we have spots where we can power up exosuits that we can then send out to the world. Uh, we have our resources and so on up here. Here's a marker of how many times we traveled in time successfully and sort of fixed the timeline, like delivering something to us that we got earlier. So that gives us points. Uh, we also have uh, workers here that are awake that we can use. When Once they are used, most of the time, there's some excep exceptions, but most of the time they become sleeping. And once they're sleeping, we have to wake them in order to be able to use them again. And that can be done in two ways. You can do a free action, which is a circle. It's always a circle if it's a free action, because you can take one of your little markers, put it there to show that you've done this one, and you can do it only do it once per round. And so you will sort of uh, clap your hands and wake them up, which means they will be ha not be too happy. So the moral, the moral will slowly go down. And once uh, once you go down, you get minus points. If it goes all the way to bottom, and you still get make them unhappy. Then someone dies, one of the workers. 
On the other hand, you could spend in actions, uh, because you have action spaces, all squares that look like this are action spaces. So you could send someone here and pay the amount of water that is down here to wake them up happy. It's like they get breakfast, they get some water for breakfast, right? And then the mor morale goes up and you get score points instead for the end game where we calculate how many points everyone has. Then uh, on this board we also have places for anomalies. Now I can have four, uh, uh, not, well not anomalies, uh, paradoxes. I can have four paradoxes until before I get, uh, well when I get the fourth one I will get an anomaly. But normally on the A side, and Draco has this as well, he can only get three. So he has to be careful with tampering with the timeline because he might end up getting those anomalies that are minus points and so on. Then we also have buildings. We have four different types of buildings. The buildings are like this. This is a building. Uh, this is a lab that I can place down here. And I can build up my buildings. The buildings itself, like this one, will give me an action that I can do. And then I don't need to send an out an extra suit to do it because I'm at home, right? So if it's here, I can just send a guy straight down here and do the action. So that's sort of how you build your engine so you can do more actions without having to power up exosuits and send them out in the world. And so there's a bunch of different of these, I'll explain them as we go. And the cost for the buildings are typed down, so you see that it's here, so if you are going to build, for example, uh, you have the, basically, the, the they call it the, um, uh, what's it called? Um, power, uh, power plants, which are sort of like the, the time travel units. Uh, you have the factories, you have water plants for getting your water, and you have labs down here. They can do different things, it's all special actions. So when I build with something, as I say, I build a water plant. The first one I always have to build from the left to the right. The first one will cost me one uranium and two titanium. And I really love this little symbol. Let's see if I can zoom in here so you can see it. If something costs something, then you have a hole <laughs> below it. So this one costs two titanium, two gold, and two water. It's all, almost like in the you know uh, cartoon movies, like the um, you know, what's it called, like uh, Donald Duck and stuff, uh, where it's sort of it's, uh, suddenly a hole appears, you know, <laughs> and something falls down. It looks like that. That's what it reminds me of. So I really like that little. Uh, but it's, it's sort of very well explained as well. Well, there's a hole. Something will fall in it. You will lose it. So yeah. Okay, there's a bunch of stuff to go. Let's just keep. Uh, let's just get into the game and start playing and I'll explain things as we go. Now the only thing I haven't done in setup, I just want to show you, is uh, below the leader, and the leader, there's two leaders in each faction, there's four different factions, so there's a bunch of vari variability, and the boards can be shifted and so on. Uh, and it's really easy to make an expansion for this game, because you just have to release new cards with new leaders and abilities. Every leader has an ability. Uh, below it you see the starting resources, so let's show you how that works. I'm just going to mention that this game comes with a deck of cards and you can draft what starting resources you have instead. So it's really cool, you can really vary that as well. And there's a bunch of different modules for this. And since these miniatures here doesn't come with the base game, they come in something called the Exosuit Commander Pack, that is an expansion, and that one also has a dip, some different modules. Uh, we will do another video actually to show you how uh, it works with the, some modules. So check out uh, the list up here, click the little eye, to see the playlist for this game for an equity. I already did uh, unboxings for these two and there's more coming as we go. I'm also going to play this eight times in solo mode uh, where I'll just play through a solo against the Chronobot. The Chronobot is sort of the uh, computer, sort of the, 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 uh, the game itself. Uh, but it acts as a real player and it has its own board, it has its own miniatures and all of that, it's really cool. Uh, so there will be a, I don't know when you're watching this, but if you check the, the well, the link that was there, it's also in the description, then you'll find the playlist and in the playlist there's a bunch of videos coming out for an acronym. So let's get going, Draco will get full water. And so these uh, light blue are ones, so he gets four of those. He'll get two titanium, so he'll get two titanium, he'll get two gold, it's these, and he'll get one neutronium actually to start off. So obviously someone already visited him uh, from the future with some neutronium. He gets three of these power cores that he will use as we go, and then he gets one sleeping administrator. So let's uh, take a look closer on this uh, employment uh, tracks here. So he has one sleeping administrator, he gets three awakened uh, scientists that can be used right away. And he'll also get one 
engineer that is awake. There we go. So that's the setup, and then you just have the leader card over there. Uh, also, on the leaderboard, you have a sort of end game goal that you have, and th these are different depending on who you're playing. So Draco needs to build three power plants or uh, time machines, as I like to call them, to fulfill this uh, requirement and then he will have, get three points when he evacuates and evacuate is an action that will come later I will explain that when it comes he also will get extra points when he does when he does make the evacuate which he only do once he will get three extra points for every neutronium he has so he will be uh, looking to uh, gather as many of those as possible before that uh, over at my side I need to build three laboratories and I'll get five points and then I need to have a combination of the scientific breakthroughs uh, I, I actually start with one and also I need scientists and I'll get two points for every pair of those I have so that's what I'm aiming for. So let's get into the game and the first thing that happens is this in the game phase is a really good um, play rate here. The first thing that happens is the preparation. We refill the mine, we did that with the card. We um, uh, refill the recruit pools, we did that as well with that card and the uh, employees out here, the workers. We uh, uh, reveal a new super product, so that one is revealed from the future, so we will see what will come in the future, and there's a super product that we can build, and I'll explain them as we go, it's, they are a bit special. Uh, and then we also shift the building stack, so uh, it's, you start off like this, but then you shift them, so you always have two buildings that you can build, and the next round we will shift them again, so if I want to build this one, I better hurry up, because then it will be covered by another one which in case someone builds it, then this one will be available again. So then was the preparation phase. Then we go to Paradox. Now Paradox doesn't happen the first round because in Paradox, the player that has the most um, war tiles out here on the timelines, they will roll this uh, Paradox die to see how many Paradoxes they um, create. But I'll get into that when we go to round two. Uh, then we have the power-up phase. This can be done simultaneously. We power up zero to six exosuits and we receive water income. And I'll show you how that works over at Draco's side. So let's see, Draco, I think he would like to power up an exosuit here. This one doesn't cost anything, it's free. And one over here, this one is also free for him. And then if you want to go here, then he has to pay a power core. If you want to go on that side, it doesn't really matter. But then he has to pay a cube, either a titanium, a gold, or a uranium. And I think he will go for powering up one here, and he will pay one of his power cores. So that's mainly the reason you use power cores. And now he has three spaces that is not covered, which means he will get three water. Uh, so that's your income there as well. So we'll get three water. And he's done. So let's see what I do. And you, when you play this, I mean, for Draco, it's hard to handle all these big, chunky uh, miniatures. But if you play it with humans, then everybody does it at the same time, of course. Not everyone plays with uh, stuffed pet dragons, I know. And his ear still looks weird. <laughs> Poor Draco. Yeah. Okay, so I will power up one for free. And I only have, uh, I have these three, I have three free. Draco only has two. And then I will pay one here, and I can pay either a power core or a cube, but I will pay a resource cube, I will pay a power core for that. Because I started with uh, four, uh, so I started with one more than Draco actually. So I'm powering up four suits, ready to go, four workers will be able to go out and do stuff, and Draco is powering up three. He's taking a bit more careful in the beginning. So that was the power up phase, and we go straight to warp. And now, we have a bunch of these warp tiles. Uh, we have the same ones, but we only have one of each. Now, both players in secret will choose zero to two of these. Uh, sort of like put them in your hand, and then everybody shows at the same time. Because you don't want to see, you're not supposed to see what the other ones are getting, uh, and especially how many they are getting, because that determines how the paradox phase works in the next round and so on. So, but uh, since I'm helping Draco out here, I'm going to show it to you. So, let's say. I think, what does Draco need at the start? I think he will go for... Hmm, I think Draco will... He will go for a power-up suit. And that means he will get a power-up suit from the future, sort of. So he will get another suit here, but he doesn't have to pay the cost for it. So he has that one. He's, he's uh, sort of hiding it from me, of course. And then I'll figure out what do I want. Uh... Okay, I, I have one here as well. 
And so we just reveal I will get a engineer from the future, and I have to pay one water to get him. Oh, by the way, I should get two water as well, because I didn't use all my spaces, so the ones that are left, I get water for. So I'll pay water for the engineer. I'll put the line, the, the uh, warp tiles down here. And so Draco will get a powered up suit, so he gets another suit out here for free. But now, somewhere in the future, in the game, we have to send, he has to send a powered up suit back, and I have to send an a engineer back. And the engineer has to be awake, actually, because I got the, uh, the engineer awake when I got him. So that's how it worked for the warp phase, and now we go into action round. Since now we take actions until everyone has passed, we just keep going back and forth. So if I'm the first player, and I have my banner out there to show it, now you can't really see it, let's do it like that. <laughs> and so I will be starting out here. And so what do I want to do? Well, I think for my first action, um, because I need to build three labs, right? And I have a special thing here as well on my board. If I use a building and I use a scientist on it, then he comes home awake. He doesn't become sleeping like they normally do. So I want to build a lab. Uh, right, so I will send my engineer. That's why I got my engineer. I will send him. I'll put him in one of the suits like this, and he's ready to go. And I will send him over to the building spot. And now I can build something. And since I sent an engineer, I have a discount of one titanium. So if I want to build a lab, the lab will cost me one uranium, two titanium, and one water. But since I have that discount, it's only one uranium, one titanium, and one water. So I'll pay that to the bank, basically, uh, like that. And now I can build something in that spot. And now what can I build? Well, we have two different labs out there. So either I'll get this one where a scientist can go to remove one of these warp tiles. I don't have to travel back in time to fix it. Or I can build this one where uh, a um, administrator can go and pay to water to recruit a scientist or an engineer. And he actually comes home awake as well. But that's the same for this one. So I'll take this one. Uh, well, I'll be able to remove. No, 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 no. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's not. It's not the warp tiles I can remove. I can remove paradoxes. If I get paradoxes down here, I can remove them. Okay. So let's build that one. And I already paid for it. I'll put it down here. I have to put it to the uh, left mode spot, and now I can send a scientist. I sense my special ability because I'm playing on the B side and I have the path of uh, progress. If I send a scientist to do work here, here, or here, then he will come home awake. So that's my first action, and now it's time for Draco's action. So let's see, what does Draco want to do? Well, I think he's going to try and build as well, uh, right off the bat. So he wants to build a time machine, right? Um. So that will cost him one neutronium, two titanium, and one water. If he sends out an engineer, then he will get a discount of one titanium. So he will do that, and he fires up this suit with an engineer in it. He will go to the building spot, but now he has to pay water because he was the second one to get there. So he pay water, and now he can build. So he pay, he will pay one of these, one of these, and one water as well. And so now he can build a time machine. Can you imagine that? Draco traveling in time? That would be something. Uh, <laughs> okay, so uh, I know it's hard for you guys to see, I'll, I'll explain these. Uh, he can either have one where he pay one gold to go three spaces back in time, three uh, years or rounds, basically. And uh, he'll also get a point, or he can go and pay a water and he can travel four spaces back. And I think he will go for that one, because you want to be able to travel far back in time so you can fix things on his timeline. And also, his special thing here, with the path of salvation is he can get a lot of points. He can get more points than I can if he does a lot of time traveling. So he will put it down there. And so he is done, he done his uh, move and now it's my turn again. So let's see. Now I think, hmm, I think uh, I will try, I will send a administrator out and I will do some recruitment. So I'll send him over here, and he can recruit anyone, but there's no genius here anyway. Uh, I think he will recruit, because I'm kind of low on engineers, he will recruit an engineer. Uh, as you can see here, when I do that, I'll also get a power core. And he comes home awake, as this little symbol shows here. And so I'll get an awake engineer and a power core. 
Oh, I already took the engineer, I'm stupid. I should take the power cord, there we go. Uh, so, I recruited and it's Draco's turn. And I think Draco, he has a bunch of scientists. He's going to send one of these scientists out to the research lab where he can do some research. And how, now how this works is, he's thinking about the, uh, what he can build, right? So if he want to build a super project, if this super project gives him eight points in the end, which is a lot, uh, but the only effect it has is once he builds it, he gets two science actions. Uh, so he will need two neutronium, three titanium, he needs to, to sort of kill a scientist, or basically the scientist goes to work in this Necronium Research Center, so he loses it. And he also needs either the square with the, let's see, I will show it to you, either the square with this little uh, sh uh, computer ship marker, or any triangle and any circle. So it's much cheaper if you can get exactly that symbol, right, on the square. So he can lock in one of the dice, so he will lock in that symbol, which is that one. And so he has to roll for which shape it will take. So let's see what he gets. And he got a, a circle. That was too bad. We really wanted that square. But he'll get a circle with that symbol on. Maybe he can use it for something else later on. And these are also worth points in the end of the game if you don't use them for anything during the game. Ah, there we go. So he got this symbol. The circle with the computer ship on it. So. Uh, we'll just put it down on his board like that. And remember, he could also build this building using any circle and any triangle. So maybe he will do that instead. I mean, it's going to take a while before he can build this anyway. First of all, we need to get here because this is in the future. Also, he needs two neutrona, which is kind of hard to get. So that was Draco's turn, and now it's my turn again. And now I will... Oh, let's see. Hmm. Do I want to build anything? Yeah, I think I need to get some, I need to get a way to get water and so I will need one uranium and two titanium. Now, I don't have any uranium, so I will send a uh, engineer out to the mines. Uh, let's see, I need a uranium, right? So I'll go here, I'll get the one to the right of it, it's the uranium. And then I get to pick one of these other ones and I think I'll take a titanium then. So that was my action and since I sent a engineer, as you can see here, uh, he comes back awake because he loves to go to the mine, basically. The other guys can go there, but they will be sleeping when they come back from that trip. I guess it's exhausting uses these, using these exosuits and so on, so they come home sleeping. Uh, Alright, so that was my turn, now it's Draco's turn. Oh, I think Draco... Hmm. I mean, he can't travel in time now because we're at the first round, so he can't travel back. So we have to wait on doing that. Um, I think he will go... He has a scientist. I think he will send a scientist to go to the mine because he needs some stuff as well. And I think he will go for the gold here. So he'll get the gold and he gets to pick another one. He'll take the uranium because he doesn't have any of that. So that was his action and now it's my turn. I have one more uh, suit powered up ready to go. So I'll send the administrator out in my suit and I think I will go for Oh, should I recruit someone else? Um, I need more stuff, so let's go to the mine. I'll go over here. I get the titanium, and I get to pick something. I'll take the gold. So I got two stuff there. And now my special ability, being the Patreon Valerian, is I could send out a suit as an engineer uh, as a free action and it's sort of the suit goes out by itself it's like a robot so I don't need to put a worker in there so maybe I should have done that but yeah I forgot about it so let's do that the next round so it's Draco's turn he has one more worker awake and he has one more suit so he'll suit up and he'll go uh, let's see where does Draco want to go now I think I think Draco will go and research again but now he has to pay one water because it's the second spot and he will do the same thing again. He will try to get that uh, symbol there that he wants. Oh, there he goes. A square. So he gets a square with the symbol. It was perfect. That's what he wanted. And so now he is ready to, in the future, build, in the next round, build that uh, uh, sort of super project that he wanted to build. So he has it down there. And so it's my turn. And now I don't have any more exosuits. But I can use my special building. The thing is, I don't need to remove it in paradoxes now because I don't have it. So I will pass. I have nothing else to do. I could, of course, spend an action to awake 
my engineer, but everybody wakes at the same time, so you want to do it when you have a lot of guys sleeping, not when you only have one. So I'm passing, and Draco can't really do anything else he, either. Uh, he can't travel in time, he doesn't have any workers uh, awake. Uh, this guy's sleeping, he could wake him, but force awake, which would lower his morale. By the way, Draco started a bit higher on the morale track, but he can get less points from it. Uh, but uh, then again, there's no point in doing that now. So, that was the first round of Anachrony. And so, we go to the next phase, which is clean up. We retrieve our workers. So, everybody comes home, and we just have to keep track on all oh, this guy is sleeping. He was in the mines. This guy is sleeping as well. Basically, the, the rule is they are sleeping, unless, I mean, the only exception really is when the engineer goes to the mines. So, Everybody's sleeping over at Draco's side. At my side, uh, the administrator is sleeping. The engineer that built is sleeping. The uh, administrator that got things in the mine is sleeping as well. But the engineer that went to the mine, he is awake. So he will be on the awakened side. So that was the first thing of cleanup. Then we check for impact, but that does, hasn't happened yet. We check for game end, which hasn't happened yet either. The game can end in two different ways. Either we play all the seven rounds, or the impact after the impact, the city starts crumbling down. And depending on what actions we do, it will sort of destroy itself quicker or slower. Once it's destroyed, we end the game as well. Uh, and then we go to the next era. And then we just start over here with preparation and so on. But uh, this video is getting kind of long. I'm going to take a little break there. I'll be back in part two. This video, by the way, will be in three parts because it's so long game. So I'll be back in part two where you can see when we do go into round two. We will do a lot of different stuff. You will see a lot about how the game works and so on. So don't miss part two. Just click the little eye up there to go straight to it. And we'll see you there. Thank you for watching and take care for now. We'll see you in part two.